Hi, welcome to the sixth part of the C++ guide for the JavaScript developer. I'm Oscar, and today we're going to talk about function scopes and context. Now, the reason I want to talk about this is because the next topic is going to be lambdas, and that's a fairly complex topic because the context get mixed up. So we need to get a good handle of it first. So today I'm going to write a lot of pseudocode just because I want you to understand the concept uh, since there's no syntax, there's, there's no special syntax for the context. You just need to get the concept. So if you come from the JavaScript world, you're probably already familiar with scopes. Uh, the scope of a function is whatever variable you declare inside of it, it's part of the scope. Right? So inside of this function, this variable I created exists. Outside of it, A does not exist. If I have a function declared on its own in some other part, then this function has its own scope, which is not the same as the body or the function that might call it. So on that part is the same as on JavaScript, but there is one important difference. So on JavaScript, you are able to define functions inside of other functions and they share the scope in a way that it inherits the scope of the parent function. So for now, this is not valid syntax, but let's just pretend it is. Let's just say that inside of my main function, I have declared an int function. Then the scope of this child function will be capture will capture the scope of the parent function. Um, unfortunately, on C++, this is not as easy as it seems because on C++, memory does get deallocated as the functions end up or terminate themselves, right? So if I would here use something like return a plus four, you know, everything is fine. if the, this function gets called inside of the body of the main function. Again, this is not valid C++. This is just for me to illustrate the point. But let's say, for example, I move this function I created. This is moved to the JavaScript thread or the context, right? So this, I use my main function to create this sub function, but all of the sudden, after I have created it, this no longer exists on my C++ context. But inside of the function, I'm still having a reference to the parent function. Then on C++, this will be a big problem because as the function terminates, the scope, its context, does get deallocated. If you are familiar with the stack, the memory stack, as you go creating functions, all the variables get allocated in your memory. Uh, but then, you know, I have created my sum for function, but this is now moved into different context, and my main function has been terminated, so I can actually clear the memory. And then all of a sudden, the memory of the computer will be empty. You know, something else might be executed in here. Some, some other random function will take its place on the context. Some, uh, does this function, this random function can call, you know, another random function. So then the memory is completely different than when the program started. So then from the JavaScript thread, for example, some other function might try to call the sum for function. And the place where the sum function was defined is no longer holding the, the right context. It's actually holding the context of a different function, right? So it's gonna try to read the memory address that it had before. 
and you're gonna end up with just trash right because then a is no longer gonna be four you know it could be a random it whatever is on the memory is gonna be tried to be interpreted as an integ integer and then you could end up with a random number it could be negative it could be zero it doesn't doesn't really matter it's just gonna be read as an integer so you can see this is a big problem um, there are some ways you can get around this so one way to get around this is to declare the variable on the global scope so if I do this for example then whenever my function my int main function terminates running there it doesn't have any memory allocated to it it doesn't have any scope allocated to it this global scope will never be cleaned because it's defined on the module level so my memory will retain the reference to the a variable then the main function will execute, then the sum function will execute. Eventually, the main function will be moved into the JavaScript thread. Then the main function will terminate, but the global context of my module will remain. It won't be cleansed. So this is particularly useful because then you can, you can keep some of the context that was passed um, from another module. Let's take a look into a different example let's say I call uh, init DB function and from this init DB let's say I have a string which is my dot path oh, it's documents user whatever let's just pretend this is just dot path so I'm gonna pass that dot path into my init DB function but let's just pretend, let's just think, you know, I have a init db function which takes a string, which is my doc path. And as we know, this could get deallocated. So what you want to do, for example, if, I mean, let's just say this is in a different file, for example, let's just call this the, on the db file. So if I here would do something with the doc path in a async manner, right? Let's say after my main function has finished running, then later down the road, I would try to use the same variable. As we saw, that variable might have been already deallocated, so it's not safe. What we want to do is on the moment we receive it, we save a copy of the doc path right so we just declared in here whenever the init db function is called then we're just going to say our doc path is um, a new copy right we're just going to copy the string of the string just to make sure and then you know, the rest of my function so then it doesn't matter if the original scope of the main function was cleared I know that my module has its own copy, which is saved from the allocation, and I don't need to worry about it. Great. So on the next lesson, we're going to start looking into lambdas, which um, are very necessary for the JavaScript JSI, for the React Native JSI uh, module. And there we're going to see, we're going to write actually code, which has some semantics about capturing variables and scopes of the functions. I hope you enjoyed the video and please consider subscribing. Thanks.